good evening. I've, I've been a clinical doctor for 35 years treating illness and injury, but I came to see that what we really needed to treat in this country were populations. So I want to give you a little flavor of that tonight. And we need the obligatory warning, of course. So what did I learn? As you pointed out about health behaviors, the usual do's and don'ts are not what make us healthy. Now, I used to rant on my patients' behaviors for years and, and decades, and I came to see that they don't matter as much as we think. What really does matter are societal factors. The things that we do in society that make makes health out of, come automatically are much more important than what individuals do. Now, how to get that across? That social factors, societal factors matter more. That's really what health is all about. And you can have sick societies, and I want to offer tonight that the United States is really a very sick society, and I'll present the data to show that, and it's been a very painful process, and I'll be honest, my talk is a down, because sick societies <laughs> and just because we live in the United States, we're going to die much younger than we should. It's automatically given and programmed, and there's not much we can do about it unless we all act together. So being born in the USA is bad for your health. So how can I present this? Well, I coined the term the Health Olympics uh, about a decade ago. That's, we compete in other Olympic events. Where would we compete if, if, we were, uh, if there was a health event? We wouldn't be there for the final day's race because we would, would have been disqualified in the trials. So our Central Intelligence Agency gives world rankings for uh, length of life, and here we are at 50th. That is, 49 other countries have longer health than, better health than we do, but this is a mistake, because there's Gibraltar. Now, I don't think we should be as a rock as healthier than we are. So let's take out all those small, small tax haven countries, and we end up 29. That's still not very good, because in the 1950s, we were one of the healthiest countries in the world. The fact that it's not behavior suggests that the country with the smallest percentage of men smoking on this list is the United States. The country with the highest percentage of men smoking is Japan. So obviously, personal behaviors can't be as important as we used to think that they were. So this is life expectancy at birth. Suppose you're 50 years of age. How much time do you have left to live? We're in the same position as we were at birth. Furthermore, who's been dragging our life expectancy down? It's been women. So this is life expectancy <laughs> at age 50. Are you talking about men's life expectancy? Women had the longest length of life of those countries, and now they're way behind. Yeah, but you tell us what makes us that worse. <laughs> <laughs> we start health care. We always start the world's health care bill to accomplish this. So health is not about, health, it's not health care that produces health. I have to say that, having worked as a doctor for 35 years, it doesn't do very much. Half of our health is programmed between conception, between the erection, and before we go to school. <laughs> early life lasts a lifetime. So you've got to get these early factors right in order to be healthy. So you need medicines for populations, but they're not the kind of medicines you're going to get in your pharmacy. So what are population medicines? Things that you do to a whole society to make them healthy. So what do you think they might be? Caring and sharing turns out to be the most important factor producing health in a society. Caring and sharing, and somebody talked about it today, the whole Umstead study, uh, on social factors mattering more than personal behaviors. When is it that we need to do societal caring and sharing? Well, if I said early life you know, is critically important, that's when we need to do it. We need to produce caring and sharing in early life in order to have healthy uh, adults. And what are those factors in early life that matter most? Well, any of you parents in this room? How can you parent without time to parent? So all the healthier countries have paid antenatal leave, and the United States, Swaziland, Liberia, and Papua New Guinea are the only four countries in the world without paid maternal leave. That's got to change if we don't want to die so young. Societies with a small gap between the rich and the poor live longer than societies with a big one. One third of our deaths in this country can be attributed to the big gap between the rich and the poor. It's at record levels. It's got to come down. So more equality in our society is one of these structural factors that will automatically make things better without having to change personal behaviors. Yes, we still need doctors and we need the medical care system, but it's not as important as we think. We have to create a system, a system that produces health with us, us thinking about the individual things we do or don't do, and that is the solution. This is an armored car picking up the loot from my hospital, and it's got the right, uh, the right answer there. So, if we are going to live longer, if we are going to be healthier as a society, we've got to get the boundary conditions right. 
Uh, and that has to be changing the structure of society and decreasing inequality and focusing on early life to live on.